but there's a range in arena where you only face reflectile and at that point you're gonna have to go to plan b and i think having a spiky wing aqua for instance at least gives you a better shot against that what's going on axie fam elijah here back with another video and today i have one i'm very excited about because i'm going back in time to the og double aqua build or at least one of them and that is what you see before you here with a really strong midliner arco scarab piranha tons of shield the beast and bug damage mixed in to help get through plants and reptiles and scarab probably my favorite midliner aqua card to deal with healing plants in the later stages of the game so that your backline aqua that is all pure cards here can get the job done phenomenal balanced plant up front here with gota and sandal beach cattail lots of shield as well of course you can get really fancy these days and go with the caterpillar gota sandal dusk with cattail it'll cost you a bit more but that's probably the best frontliner that you can have these days so one of the questions you guys might be having is are double aquas still viable especially in a really complex meta with reptiles plants birds all kinds of builds in the top 100 so what i'll do first is run through the top 100 take a look at how many double aqua builds there actually are then i'm going to showcase a few games that i played today with this classic aqua build and break down my thought process and highlight its strengths and perhaps its weaknesses as well. So first of all, rank nine, we have our one player in the top 10 running double aquas. He's doing it with a balloon koi version on the back line. Rank 24 going with the double Gota build and eggshell on the back line, quite creative. He has a chance to pull away some uh, axes with manipulation there in the late game. Then we have Palaco, who right now is playing a double aqua build. Very classic with the spiky wing on the back. This is basically my season 19 top 100 team then we have another balloon aqua starting at rank 66 we see the build that i'll be covering today with the cuckoo on the horn there is another cuckoo backliner quite a creative midliner here with axi kiss not sure how viable it is but hey he's in the top 100 so that's good another cuckoo aqua with scarab midliner here we have an interesting one with hermit at the mid but yet again another cuckoo aqua back to spiky wing uh basically what we just saw from palaco uh and finally one more cuckoo at rank 97 but essentially that was 10 builds in the top 100 that are using double aquas so it is definitely viable at the highest stage at the highest meta the real question is how is it doing in the mid stages on the way up and i think what i'll do today is cover this build that i find to be doing really nice in the top 500 ish range i went 15 and 9 with it today i'm sitting around rank 300 at the moment and again i think this will be part one in a series that i do around double aquas for this season i think next i'll look at the spiky wing backliner because i think that's probably going to be better against the reptiles reflectiles that are out there but for the sake of today's video let's jump into some of the games that i played and i'll explain my thought process around this team so first we have uh ak-47 different from the ak over at axie gg but nonetheless a very tough player he's in the top 100 and this game is just gonna get to show you kind of what this team can do the firepower that it can bring even against double plants for instance now notice I'm experimenting with having bird eyes and ears on my backline aqua which makes it very low HP 402 but I'm pretty much guaranteed to go first versus almost every other aqua out there because lower HP determines which one of the same class is gonna go first the downside of that is this backliner actually can't survive two 110 damage cards and two 120 damage cards. It'll actually die by a very small margin. Anyway, I'm just playing around seeing the trade-offs. There's pros and cons, obviously, but round one, I go with Arco, double Piranha. His plant already getting smacked in the face. He's down to 159 HP, and we can see here that the firepower is no joke. Round two, I decide to go with two Nemos. I get a nice draw to boost up my energy, and I kind of feel like, you know, I know he can brick wall here but when i get the little extra damage from the nemos i have another beast card and one piranha on the back i decide to go for it because if i clear up this plant i'm in great shape knowing that my backline aqua is guaranteed to go first against this midliner so he does draw two sandals which gave him 100 shield up front but we can see that was not enough he gets no value out of those sandals and now i'm feeling extremely good about this game I play my Koi's because there's no use in saving them for this plant. It's better if I just speed up now and go before this midliner next round. 
I have weakened it. So if I didn't speed up, he would have gone first. Again, keeping in mind that the lowest HP Axie goes first, but I gained speed. So I'll be going first. Not that it matters because we starch his Aqua here in round three. And you know, even though my plant goes in the last stand and I'm out of cards, I've now put myself in a position where I should be able to get it done facing a very unfavorable final backliner here, which is a plant. But it's not gonna be a walk in the park necessarily because you know these plants are insane and they're very difficult for double aqua teams. But if you play strong, you can still book a fair amount of wins versus this particular build. So round five, making sure that I close it out, I decide to play both cuckoos on my backliner. I'm basically setting myself up for a big burst in the following round. And I'm obviously gonna use the two midliner cards of Scarab here to get some nice damage in and make sure that he cannot heal up with any mosquitoes this round round or the next round. He goes with an interesting play, keeps my midliner alive with gravel. It turns out I draw no cards on it, but I get a full hand on my backliner and having plus two attack already, I feel like, you know, this is the time for me to go for it and rip this off. He cannot heal. And then next round, I already have one Cuckoo. You know, worst comes to worst, I'll probably get two more damage cards and maybe even get lucky with a second Cuckoo and have a nice bit of damage to hopefully finish him off. But hey, I'm leading with the 120 damage card here. Of course, you always wanna lead with the highest damage card when you have attack up. And I don't even think I'm gonna need a next round. That's 167 damage, all four cards to the face of that plant and the double aqua team gets it done that game. So this next game, I'm basically gonna fly through it because it's straightforward. You guys know normally I just play my cards versus Buntenna teams, especially because this is a really favorable matchup. So as long as I don't get behind on energy, I'm gonna be in good shape. The main reason I'm showing you this one is to highlight how good this team is against bug builds. Obviously, if there's ever a mech in the uh, equation, you're gonna be in really good shape. But double bug aqua, which is a really annoying build to face, you're gonna have such an easier time playing this build, which is a relief because I personally hate playing against double bug aqua. So I play my cards round one. There's no steals that happen. He gains another energy here with carrot, but I keep firing and we've now gotten rid of the dusk up front. He's stacking up a ton of energy going to six in round three and I've seen no antennas yet, right? So I wanna make sure that I uh, stay ahead here. I think I'm in a good position. I'm gonna play blue moon, cuckoo to get rid of the stun and then another blue moon. Now his bug's already down to 180. He really commits with the signals, but look, I'm not letting this happen. I'm gonna protect my energy, make sure I stay ahead. We go into last stand, we draw cards, still in great shape. Now here, I think uh, card ordering is very important. I decide to play the piranha on the back liner, basically to catch the stun from the fish snack on this bug so that my mid liner can go ahead and play everything here, including both Nemo's and get maximum value. So I go with piranha, the cuckoo to follow, make sure I am clean for the next round to play more cards. And he goes with a fish snack and uh, cute bunny, but with the extra Nemo damage here, he's not even gonna get any of that off. Down goes the bug, and now, you know, this Aqua here with no speed up, no support, is completely toast. Doesn't really matter what I do at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna book the W. And yeah, this is um, pretty straightforward, like I said. It feels good, right? All this stuff in between, this double Aqua team is gonna be very strong against. Like, you can pretty much beat anything except for reflectiles. That's the one thing that if you're facing a ton of, you're gonna be in really, really bad shape. And I think that a variation is good to have on hand. Like if you can afford to have two backline aquas, one with cuckoo for when you get to this range of top five, 100, and actually probably on the way up, you're gonna smash faces with this high throttle uh, backliner with all the aqua cards. But there's a range in arena where you only face reflectile. And at that point, you're gonna have to go to plan B. And I think having a spiky wing aqua, for instance, at least gives you a a better shot against that. So I'll probably make a video on that build next and hopefully get some games in where I'm playing against Reflectiles to actually see how it holds up against them. But Axie is a tricky game right now because in the top 100, you have all kinds of stuff. And one of the ways the season's gonna play out is, well, if Double Plant Bird becomes too dominant, then the Reflectiles are gonna shrink up because they do so bad against that matchup. But if there's a lot of Aquas and not that many Double Plant Birds, Reflectiles are gonna come back out to the surface. So we kinda have to just see how it goes. But one thing's for sure, 
double aqua as we can see with the top 100 players is definitely still viable if you learn how to master it you can kind of get around any team comp even sneak in some wins against those reflectiles but the fact is if you have a high win rate against everything else then you're gonna be in pretty good shape to climb. Let's take a look at one final game and then I'm gonna wrap this video up. So this was kind of a weird one. It felt like it was almost getting away from me, but I somehow pulled it off. And this is gonna be highlighting the use, the beauty of this backliner that has both bird eyes and ears, okay? So I know here that I'm going first against his that only has the bird part on the ears, but he actually has aqua eyes. And in round one, I decided to come out swinging with piranha, I'm stacking up a cuckoo. You know, there's no real point in playing the cuckoo first because I might actually crit him here or something crazy. And if I can hang on to it, it's always a good idea to just be a little more patient with using that damage bonus. And he goes down to 201 health and we destroy an energy. So he only has three energy here. I decide to keep firing. I saw one high shield card from him there with his sandal. So with 200 health, there's a chance that I, you know, pull off a kill here. And essentially, I just want to keep avoiding that serious steal since I haven't seen one yet. If I get through the plant, that's great. If I don't, I'll, I will almost kill it. And then I can figure out, you know, how to approach it in the following round. But down the plant goes. We're low on energy. He has all the energy and options here. He elects not to just burst through my plant, but rather to stock up even more with a double Nemo play Arco and Scarab. I'm gonna draw two cards because I played Cattail. I have to figure out what, you know, what I'm gonna do here because what looks to be happening is him setting up for a serious burst with his midline, which now goes first because he played Arco to kill my plant. And then a very easy four card combo on his back line is gonna just destroy my midliner almost regardless of how much shield I put up because these aqua cards are insane this patch. They do 141 damage because of the skill uh, changes that have been made recently compared to, I believe it was 134 in the uh, previous versions of the game. So yeah, I have cards, but like playing this Arco and this Scarab isn't gonna do anything. I know he's coming for the throw here and my mid line is almost certainly dead so I did consider playing the beach to do exactly this which it would be to throw him off like if my plant last stands and he throws four cards straight into it that would be insane and obviously very good for us if I put up 40 extra shield I kind of think that would have happened let's take a look so this Arco puts me down to 54 HP that would have put me at 94 HP and then I think Scarab does like 135. So I'm not 100% sure if I would have gone into last stand, but definitely worth considering those little like nuanced plays as you get higher and higher up in the ranks because sometimes they can just flat out win you a game. Nonetheless here, my plant dies, my midliner dies. And you can see that the choice that I decided to go with in terms of my you know game plan was to just relinquish everything go up to six energy, knowing that my back line is definitely gonna be faster than him. Kinda hope that he gets depleted enough to where he has to use so many cards and so much energy that he doesn't have enough to kill my backliner in one go in the following round. That's exactly what happens. He goes down to uh, three energy going into this next round, which we know is not enough to kill an Aqua that's gonna be putting up as much shield as I am here. So now I'm pretty much home free. I wanna make sure I play both Koi's in case you know he tries to speed up as well. I guarantee that I go first. Uh, even though he only has one Koi left, I'm just being extra safe. And he's thinking about what to do, doesn't really have a great play, ends up going with the double Cuckoo. You know, I think he probably could have tried to go for double Cuckoo, Blue Moon, two Piranhas. I'm not sure if that would have killed me, but knowing that at this point he's basically dead if he passes here, I think he should just go for that and try to get the crit or uh, pray that it's enough damage. Nonetheless, he stocks up, we burst through, we're gonna speed up twice. And we even get the blue moon value in last stand to get another um, nice full hand and card draw here to just guarantee we wipe out this backliner with four 120 damage cards, which is one of the most insane combos in this patch. Look at this. I mean, he had so much shield, but it's just not enough. Down goes his aqua. We pull off the win. It was a kind of a messy one, but you know, just taking your time and being patient and trying to find a way out, even if the game feels like it's not going your way, is always the important decision to try to make. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Right now, you can get this team for under 500 bucks, which I think is really good value. It's gonna help you push up to that max SLP farming range and cross 2K MMR. I think once you get 
to the top 1000. That's where it gets tricky with the massive load of reflectiles, okay? And then there you might wanna to start to think about switching out that backliner for a spiky wing aqua maybe, or even better would be a plant and go with an aqua double plant build if all you're playing against is reflectiles. You know, once you get into the higher ranges, top 500, 300, top 100, obviously you we can see double aqua, solid as it's ever been hanging out in the top 100 we have one top 10 player using it right now and that's good to see so i'll definitely be mixing this up in my climb this season maybe it'll be what i do my final push with again my last season top 100 build was a double aqua i'm super comfortable playing this team it's a lot of fun and i hope you guys find success in the arena with your fishies okay i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching peace